lecturer at the University of Bath and I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, mental and emotional well-being. Uh, so this is the first time I've done uh, Facebook Live so do do bear with me. Um, I've got some questions with me today but first I'd like to tell you a little bit about what I do. Uh, so I do a little bit of research in Raynaud's uh, but I also do quite a lot of research um, looking at uh, psychological distress in different kinds of medical conditions. Uh, so I'm going to be drawing a lot from my knowledge um, uh, to help you with some of your questions today. I've already got some questions here which I'll be coming back to in a moment uh, but I also plan uh, to give you some tips and advice uh, in different areas as we go along. Uh, so even if they're not covered I may be covering some additional things that you may want to ask about. Uh, but if you've got questions or comments um, please email in um, SIUK um, oh, that's not the right email. So if you just look down the Facebook uh, on the left hand side, there should be uh, the email address uh, that you can email in. And also I should hopefully see uh, your comments popping up. So I'm just keeping an eye on now. Um, OK. Um, first of all, the most important thing to say, I think, is that um, Feeling anxious and fearful at this time is really, really normal. And in fact, if you weren't feeling a little bit unsettled, uh, then that would be quite concerning, really. Um, so everything around us is changing. We're being asked to change our behaviour. We're being um, told to do different things that will elevate our anxiety, such as washing our hands frequently, staying away from people, keeping indoors. And these are really very abnormal things that we're being asked to do. So it's perfectly understandable uh, that people are becoming anxious and worried uh, about their mental health. And particularly if you've got a health related problem, you're likely to be more anxious anyway, and you may see some elevation in that. OK. All right. So uh what i'd like to do now is come to some of the questions if you just bear with me okay um so i have a question here uh, from somebody uh, asking um i have a i suffer from anxiety and self isolation what tips do you have for someone who has health anxiety so health anxiety um, is an area i do most of my research in and i also run a clinic working with people with health anxiety as uh, so this is really very familiar to me um, what we know about health anxiety is that it is quite high in people with medical conditions and uh, what do i mean by health anxiety uh, so it's a type of anxiety that's characterized by um, a preoccupation or over focus on health related symptoms or sensations uh, so if you have health anxiety you might um, notice changes in your body normal changes in your body more frequently than those people who uh, don't have health anxiety and what that tends to lead to in people with health anxiety instead of thinking oh that's just a change in my body um, and, and then to ignore it or expect it to pass they will become um, preoccupied and, and focus on it quite a lot um, and then they'll do certain uh, strategies to help with that anxiety such as seek reassurance from doctors, keep on checking the body, um, that kind of thing. Um, just trying to do anything at all to prevent getting an illness that they're particularly worried about. Uh, but what we know is that some of these strategies actually serve to increase um, uh, anxiety rather than decrease. You may be familiar yourselves with Googling symptoms. So I don't know anybody who's ever felt better after Googling um, health related symptoms. So it's definitely something uh, to, to keep to keep uh, avoiding. Um, as, it's, uh, as I say, it's one of the key things that uh, increase anxiety. Uh, so, so what tips do I have for somebody who has health anxiety? Well, there's a lot of information coming in at the moment that's health related around COVID. Um, so shifting focus away from health related symptoms is really important at this time. Now, if you've got spiroderma, you're likely to have a lot of other physical symptoms as well uh, that may be troubling. So you might find that uh, it's harder for you. Um, so one thing to bear in mind is that if you shift your attention away from your physical symptoms, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to miss something. Um, but shifting it the attention away is going to reduce your anxiety. So shifting attention away is the first thing I would say. Uh, so uh, instead of being preoccupied with your physical sensations, then move away to do something which is quite enjoyable instead, a meaningful activity of some kind. If you are using any strategies um, 
including the ones I've talked about that you find increasing your anxiety, uh, then um, that's something that you might want to consider reducing. So if you're seeking reassurance from other people, you'd reduce that as well. Because um, if you ref reflect on that, you'll find that actually seeking reassurance doesn't really help that much. Um, also, if you have it, if you've got lots of notifications around news and information, reduce those as well. Anything that's coming in in terms of health related information, COVID related, then I would reduce that as much as possible. Only access information as frequently as frequently as you need, which is probably only about once or twice a day. I would really discourage any bodily scanning, those kinds of things, um, because again, they increase anxiety. If I asked you to focus on your body right now, you're likely to find some kind of symptom. And if then you were to worry about that, then that would not only make you feel more anxious, but also it was mo more than likely increased physical symptoms in your body because the stress response increases physical symptoms. So in summary, really, it's just a reminder that it's really normal to feel anxious. It's really normal to have physical sensations that change and pass. So really I'd shift away from any new physical sensations as much as possible. Um, try to do useful strategies such as focusing on pleasant activities instead. And uh, also try not to seek reassurance, minimize that information. Now is a particularly difficult time for people with health anxiety. So if you feel like these basic strategies and things like relaxation are not helping, um, then I would encourage you to think about uh, accessing help. So we do have uh, a lot of uh, resources that are available to us um, in terms of uh, IAPT. We have a service called IAPT, Wellbeing Services. So I would encourage you to get in touch with mental health services through your GP if you feel it's getting too much. There's also other resources such as Anxiety UK uh, who have free phone lines and they do have access to telephone therapy. So use the basic strategies if you've got health anxiety. Um, but actually, if you feel like it's getting too much, I would definitely recommend that you get in touch with specialist services. Um, OK, uh, you may also find some health anxiety strategies on the NHS websites, which also talk about health anxiety. So hopefully that's the first question answered. If we uh, move on to a couple more. Um, are there any apps that you can use to help you with mindfulness? Um, so for those of you who uh, don't know what mindfulness is, mindfulness is uh, sort of like a, it's originated in a Buddhist philosophy, but it's now used in uh, different types of therapy. So mindfulness based cognitive therapy. And the main principle is that you um, observe your thoughts without judgment. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, analogy they often use in mindfulness um, is that you can imagine um, a, a cloud passing as if it's your thought um, instead uh, and taking that stance where you're detaching yourself and observing the thought passing in the same way uh, that you would a cloud. And also uh, another analogy, which I think is really useful, I use quite a lot with my patients, is if, imagine that if you were at a train station and a train comes in and that's the thought, instead of getting on the train and going off in a specific direction, uh, then actually what you want to be doing is just observing the train and letting it pass through the station. So that's a, a sort of, a, in a nutshell, mindfulness. And we have found that mindfulness is really, really useful for stress, different kinds of uh, stress. So, so really, if you're feeling um, anxious, that should be useful to you as well. Um, and so some of the, the, the apps uh, that are most highly recommended, Headspace, that's the one that I'm familiar with, but also there's one called Calm and uh, Stop, uh, Breathe and Think, which also is very helpful because it allows you to check in first. One of the benefits of mindfulness is, is that it can help really directly with anxiety and stress because it's bringing you back to the moment back in the body and really what anxiety and stress is is a stress response um, because your body thinks that there's a threat and what it does is it activates all of the internal processes uh, to ensure that you have enough energy to fight or flight so you'll be familiar with the fight or flight response and really that's what anxiety is on a much lower level um, at uh, and you might have that on a day-to-day -day level as well. Um, so you can understand why it's, it's very exhausting being anxious all of the time. 
Um, okay, so hopefully uh, those apps could be useful to you uh, and give you a bit of an idea of what stress is really. Um, okay, we've got some comments here. Okay, I'll come back to those in a moment. Okay, what can you do if you're self-isolating and um, worried about not seeing people for a long time? Um, so I think the first thing to say that it's we're all in the same boat with that one. Um, we are all, all, I mean, especially people who are at home on their own, maybe facing um, a, a pretty difficult time um, because it, <laughs> I have to apologise. I'm also uh, isolating at home, and you may be able to hear my children in the background. Um, so, I'm really sorry about that. Um, so, I mean, we can talk about some of the, <laughs> the stress a bit later of being at home and some of those challenges of living with other people as well. Um, so, if you're at home and you're worried about not seeing people, it's important to keep in touch. But there are a few things to say about that. Um, a lot of people have. Uh, fall into the trap of uh, calling a lot of people, catching up with people, reaching out to people. And while that's really very good, we also have to bear in mind that that's, that's resources, our resources going out as well. And actually, we need to think about what we need uh, and that, that actually spending um, time um, making sure that we are enriched as well with that social contact. Um, so the research tells us that um, it's more depth of connection rather than frequency of connection so instead of those quick uh, check-ins uh, actually what, what you really want to be doing is having meaningful conversations with people um, that are, are deeper and longer so actually it's a good opportunity to um, to, to strengthen relationships, strengthen social relationships at this time when at other times you may not have had the time or space to do that. Um, so it's really normal to worry about not seeing people. We are social animals. Um, we've spent our whole lives interacting with people. It's where we get um, validation from other people. It's where we, we get to feel normal and we get to feel understood. So we must ensure that if, it, if it's not an obvious way to have contact with people, such as in your in your house with your family, um, but, but there's other ways to do that as well. So. We can do that through medium that we're doing now, which is uh, Facebook, um, and also uh, through uh, Twitter, uh, other other mediums as well of, of staying in contact. Instagram, I'm not very familiar with Instagram myself, but reaching out. And if that's not accessible to you, um, then there's other things like, uh, particularly uh, NHS uh, check in and chat. The NHS are developing an intervention now. Um, for for ensuring that people are in 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 touch with others, I've got some comments there saying hi, hello Victoria in sunny Wigan. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for your feedback, Una. Um, so I think we need to think more broadly about how we're how, how we're keeping in touch socially. Um, but checking and chat, staying on Facebook. Um, also, I think if you are feeling very lonely, that's quite important as well. So. If the isolation is, is, is leading you to feel low or lonely, I would encourage you to um, make contact with phone lines such as uh, Samaritans or Mind, uh, have free phone lines and not to suffer on your own really. Um, there are lots of people out there, um, I don't know about you, but I've received lots of um, information about who is available to, who is available in my community to talk to uh, or to buy shopping. So try and tap into whatever's available. And sometimes we're not that, uh, don't find it that easy to reach out for help. Um, at, and, and it is something that we may need to do more of at this time. People find it very rewarding reaching out to others. So that's a two way process. You can also reach out to people. So I've got some people watching from London and Tropical Glossop. Thanks for joining us. Do post any questions if you have them. I'll be going through some questions of anybody who's just joined uh, that have already been sent to me in advance. Um, and I've also got some uh, tips uh, that I'll give you as we're going along. And um, so let's do one of those now. So um, as it is a really challenging time, it can be um, very difficult to manage worry. And some people may feel like the worry um, is, is overwhelming and that they don't have any control of it. Um, 
So one of the things that we can do is um, what we call worry periods or worry postponement. And uh, if you find yourself worried, it's a very simple strategy. Anybody can do it. Um, is pick a time of day, usually in the middle of the day, and uh, say three o'clock, not too close to bedtime, not too early in the day. And if you worry um, before that um, about anything at all, um, then you say to yourself, OK, I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm going to worry about it at three o'clock. And when three o'clock comes, that's your opportunity then for 15 to 20 minutes to, to worry um, to yourself. Uh, so to, to worry um, out loud, uh, you can write it down. Um, and make notes about it or you might find that when you get to three o'clock those worries have passed and you'll be wondering what you were worried about in the first place um, so when 3.20 comes and you say to yourself okay I'm not going to worry about that now I'll worry about that tomorrow and the feedback that I've had from my own patients and also from the research is that people find that really useful for a couple of ways a couple of reasons one is that they are um, not then worried all day and, and, and when we worry that triggers off a stress response which makes us feel really uncomfortable but also that they get to see that their worry is more controllable and manageable than they thought and the fact that sometimes their worries disappear by three o'clock uh, gives them the sense of actually some of those worries they could if they were able to just let them pass and then that might actually be quite helpful um, for those who can't manage that sort of three till three the next day then also the other thing that you can do in terms of worry uh, managing worry is writing down your worries just before bed and um and then making the agreement with yourself that you're going to set that down and uh and, and that you're going to think about that the next day so do try that it's like riding a bike though uh, in the sense that the first couple of times you do it it won't be um, it won't be that easy, but I would encourage you to try it several times, several days in a row, uh, and, and see how that works for you. Uh, but as I say, lots of people do tell me they have been some benefit. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the comments. Hopefully, won't delete anything. Got somebody from Edinburgh, hello there. Okay. Okay, and somebody, so Lindsay, thank you for your message. Um, Lindsay's had connective tissue disease uh, for 40 years um, and has, has mostly lived not paying too much attention to it, working, bringing up the family, etc., focusing on other things, and received a letter, as many people have, um, from the hospital telling her to shield for 12 weeks. And this has shocked her, making her feel that the disease is worse than she realised. What strategy can I use after this to keep life perspective? That's a really good question. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I think for a lot of people, uh, they have felt more vulnerable in, in this situation, certainly through the letters as well that have been sent out. And, and while 